Hi everyone and welcome to Word for Wednesday as we move today to 1st and 2nd Kings, just one book in the Hebrew Bible. Now God's plan to save the world rests on the shoulders of his people Israel, delivered from a life of slavery in Egypt and called to live at the crossroads of the world as a holy people, distinct and different from their neighbours, spurning the worship of the various fertility gods and staying true to Yahweh. Well, so far, they're not doing too well. And the diagnosis at the end of the book of Judges is, we need a king. Well, to be truthful, they already had a king. God, Yahweh was their king. But they wanted one they could see, a king with skin on. So the books of Samuel, as we saw last week, tell the story of the beginning of the kingship, with Saul, a disaster of a king, succeeded by David, a man after God's own heart. And as the curtain goes up in the books of Kings, David is nearing the end of his life. And anxious to secure the succession, he makes his son Solomon regent while David himself is still alive. After David dies, Solomon starts out well as the new king of Israel. When he's offered anything he wants by God at the beginning of his reign, he asks for wisdom. And he becomes the wisest king of his age. However, Solomon didn't apply the wisdom to his own life. He led the nation into idol worship, and after he died, the nation fell into civil war and was divided in two. Ten tribes in the north retaining the name Israel, and two tribes in the south taking the name Judah, each with its own king, each with its own place of worship. Now, Every king in the northern kingdom was bad. The worst of the lot being Ahab and his queen Jezebel, constantly confronted by the prophets Elijah and Elisha. Eventually, God's patience, God's patience runs out. And in 721 BC, they were invaded and defeated by Assyria, who exiled most of the population to live elsewhere in the empire and replaced them with other captive peoples who became the ancestors of the Samaritans of the New Testament. A handful of the kings in the southern kingdom of Judah were godly, and so they held on a little bit longer. But they didn't fully heed the lessons of the north, and so in 587 BC they fell to the Babylonians, who burned down Jerusalem and burned down the temple and took the majority of the population away into exile. And that's where the books of Kings end, with God's people having come full circle, once given the promised land as a gift from God, but now thrown out of the land and once again living in exile. And yet there is still hope, a glimmer of hope. God's promise to Eve back in Genesis chapter 3 that one day one of her descendants would come as the saviour of the world, was passed on to Abraham and was passed on to David. And by God's grace, the royal line of David is preserved in the southern kingdom of Judah. And the second book of Kings ends with the deposed king of Judah, Jehoiakim, David's descendant, being released from his Babylonian prison. The line of David continues. Hope is still alive. God's plan is still on track. And we continue that story next time as we turn to the books of Chronicles. But for now, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great plan of salvation told through the so sorry story of the Old Testament. Lord, thank you for your incredible patience with people Lord, thank you that you plan for the long term, not the short term. Lord, thank you that the line of David, the man after your own heart, was preserved by your grace in that southern kingdom of Judah, so that in the fullness of time, that great descendant of David, Jesus, would come as the fulfilment of all your promises to Israel, to the world, and to us too. Lord, help us today to follow in your footsteps, to be faithful to you, 
and to live by your grace, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us again this week. Join us next week as we move to the books of Chronicles. But for now, God bless you.